We're at Nathalia Cemetery today. We're going to have a bit of a look through and see what we think. There's a plaque that says in June 1981, the Lawn Cemetery was open, which if we just peek over the fence before I head in, that's the Lawn Cemetery right there. But in fact, the cemetery is much older than that. It's a lot closer to 1870. Um, I haven't got an exact date yet, but if I will, I will put it on the bottom of the screen later. Now in some parts of the old part of the cemetery, you'll find these little domes. Now these domes are to mark the places of pla people that have been buried. For some reason they've been done with these weird metal domes, which I thought was pretty interesting. But in other spots, if we can just sneak over here, they've been marked with little concrete blocks. So it's all a bit unusual, so obviously they haven't got everything quite particular here. And you'll note that some of the old parts have been unwatered and sort of left in disrepair a little bit. But it's probably not from a lack of trying and there's a lack of water in the area. Given the size of Nathalia, they didn't really have a proper stone smith or I don't even know what the proper term is for one. Um, so a lot of their more pretty and big stones actually came from neighbouring towns or even a little bit further away, if I'll show you in a second. If we can just zoom in, you'll see that this one down in the right hand corner has come from a chuka which is about 45 minutes away in a car so it would have been a decent drive by horse and a uh, cart back in the day but this one which is a little bit more surprising has come all the way from Seymour uh, I'm not quite sure why and that uh, about an uh, hour and a half by car from here so that would have actually been quite a decent hike um, to bring it up here. Let's see what this one looks from. Uh, it doesn't actually have an area. And a lot of cemeteries, that's where that little writing, they either sign the bottom of it or they place the town that it comes from. Which I think is pretty cool advertising if you're into that. Like, if you were of that time. Uh, you can still get buried in one of the regular headstone plots along the back there um, if you're not a fan of the boring lawn cemeteries which as I said are boring I hope to god no one decides to plant me in one of those one day um, and just as I sort of say all this I've come across this one which I think looks a little interesting oh, it's just about the township oh. I thought it might have been a proper headstone. That would have been pretty cool. Oh well. Um, Alright. We might head over in that direction. See what we can find. So I suppose to prove that you really can get buried here uh, on one of these sort of stones is if you look at the bottom of this grave, Nancy Gray was buried in 2012, which is fairly recent, in a sense. Or I'm old. It's hard to say. Now, the sun's quite low in the sky because it's late after noon here, so I'm doing the best that I can to try and not let the light ruin the shot. But I just wanted to show you the detail on this crucifixion. Like someone would have had to put hours and hours of work into that, which I think is really cool. And there's no name of who did it on the front, so we might just sort of sneak around the back. No. So we don't even know where it came from or who did it, which is a bit of a shame because clearly they put a hell of a lot of work into it. Yes, another crucifixion, but I only wanted to show you this one. I don't want to fill it up with all religious stuff. The only reason I want to show you this one is his halo kind of looks like a bowl on his head. And I thought that was a little bit funny. So, have a quick look along here. And then we might head over in that direction. 
so there was two reasons I wanted to show you this one first I thought the quote was a bit interesting and second it looks like the stonemason made a typo gouged it out and then rewrote it now mistakes on headstones it happens a bit but it generally happens more in certain towns than others there's a place close to melbourne uh, the name escapes me i'm afraid if i think of it i will put it up and perhaps even add a photo of it where a large percentage of the headstones were actually misspelled and had missed letters so they just sort of put them on on the end and they were crooked and it was pretty entertaining i'm just going to show you how beautiful some of these old stones are why well, i've got the shadow working in my advantage because that sun is awfully bright so to find the oldest ones it looks like i'm gonna have to head back over to where i started on the other side of the garden cemetery I'm well aware that this is probably a bad headstone to be showing you because it's covered by tree but if you can just see through the gap 1886 uh, it seems to be the oldest one I've found here so far and the headstone has come out of a, a company from Melbourne so there's a chance that this headstone has come all the way from Melbourne, which driving is about two and a half hours away to get here, which would have been just a huge journey for a headstone. So if you liked this video on Nefeli Cemetery and you'd like to see more cemeteries, then click subscribe so you can get the latest video or like share also leave a comment is there a cemetery in victoria you would want me to come to and show off a little might be your local it'd be pretty cool